matters relating to various adjustments prior to preparation of final accounts dear students today we will discuss about the matters prior to preparation of final accounts valuation of stock in trade final adjustments on closing stock bad debts provisions for bad and doubtful debts depreciation outstanding liabilities prepayments accrued income deferred income provision for discounts on debtors and creditors balances interest on capital interest on drawings etc matters prior to preparation of final accounts after the trial balance has been agreed and prior to preparing trading and profit loss account the following important matters will have to be dealt with and adjusted one the value of stock on hand and work in progress at the end of the financial period will have to be properly ascertained two all bad debts must be written off 3 a proper provision should be made in respect of doubtful debts 4 a fair amount should be written off by way of depreciation on assets such as plant machinery furniture fittings etc all outstanding liabilities should be brought into account 6 any payments made in advance should be properly apportioned any accrued income relating to the period and not received should be brought into account any income received in advance will have to be adjusted provision should be made for discounts to be allowed to debtors and those to be received from creditors interest on capital and drawings if the same is to be calculated should be adjusted all these various adjustments will have to be made by means of journal entries valuation of stock in trade as the figure of closing stock would materially affect the trading results it becomes necessary to see that the greatest possible care and trouble are taken to include this item at a fair and correct value for this reason inventories of unsold goods on hand at the close of each trading period should be most carefully prepared under the strict supervision of some responsible person all quantities as entered on the stock sheets and the rates should be rechecked by some competent and reliable person even the extensions and calculations made by one set of clerks should be checked by some other independent assistants the basis of valuation generally adopted is the actual cost of price if however any part of the stock is damaged or sharp soiled or has become obsolete or unsaleable due allowances will have to be made for such depreciation in value unsold stock should never be valued at selling price if that exceeds the cost of price if the goods unsold are valued at selling price the result would be to anticipate a profit upon them which may or may not be realized in other words the profit on goods should only be brought into account when they are actually sold and delivered if however the market price is less than the cost price then a loss evidently been incurred since the goods can only be sold at a loss and under such circumstances the they should be valued at the market price we have to bear in mind the fact that the figures of closing stock has to be shown on the credit side of the trading account in order to ascertain the gross profit and will then understand how any overvaluation or undervaluation of this item will show results at once misleading and false the following principles may be laid down as a sound in the determining the value of the stock of unsold goods on hand namely one profit on goods is deemed to have been earned only when the goods are actually sold two no profit should be anticipated and taken credit for until it is earned 3 if there is any chance of a loss likely to arise the same must immediately be provided for and in view of the above rules it follows that the stock of unsold goods should always be valued at cost price or market price whichever is lower final adjustments now we will discuss about the final adjustments prior to preparation of final accounts entry for bringing closing stock into account after the value of the closing stock has been ascertained 
a journal entry will be passed debiting stock account and crediting the trading account. The debit balance of stock account will, ap will appear as an asset in the balance sheet. Bad debts. Debts that are definitely irrecoverable are called bad debts and being losses must be written off as such. The entry to write off bad debts is to debit bad debts account and to credit the personal accounts of the debtors who are unable to pay. Bad debts account will be transferred to profit and loss account. Provision for doubtful debts. Even after all bad debts have been written off, there might be a number of other overdue accounts the recovery of which may be more or less doubtful. The provision for a loss on account of such doubtful debts must be made by debiting profit and loss account and crediting reserve for a doubtful debts account with an estimated amount of such loss or with a certain percentage of the total debtors. The credit balance of reserve for doubtful debts account is shown in the balance sheet by way of deduction from the item sundry debtors. Depreciation Depreciation is the loss arising through the decline in value of certain assets such as buildings, plant, machinery, fixtures, etc. on account of their being utilized in any business. Such loss is the natural outcome of the use of those assets for profit earning purposes. And if the accounts of any concern are to be prepared on a sound basis, it is necessary that it should be provided for before arriving at the figure of net profit or loss made in the business. The estimated amount of such loss is brought into account by debiting depreciation account and crediting the account of the particular asset that has depreciated. The depreciation account is closed by profit and loss account and the asset is shown in the balance sheet less amount of the depreciation written off. The question of depreciation would be fully dealt with in a subsequent lecture. Outstanding Liabilities At the time of periodical balancing, there are always several items of expenses such as rent, salaries, wages, advertisement, etc. that belong to the period under review and have accrued due but have not been paid and do not therefore appear in the accounts. All such outstanding expenses must be brought into account by debiting the appropriate nominal accounts and crediting the outstanding creditor's account. The later account will appear as a liability in the balance sheet and will be carried forward in the next year's books. At the commencement of the next year period, a reversal entry will be passed debiting outstanding creditor's account and crediting the various nominal accounts. The effect of which entry will be to close the outstanding creditor's account. Payments made in advance. There are, however, several items of expenses that are usually paid in advance, such as fire insurance, telephone charges, rates and taxes, etc. And at the time of balancing, it happens that the whole of the period to be covered by the amount already spent has not yet been expired. The proportion of the amount paid which relates to the unexpired period has, therefore, to be carried forward to the next year. This is done by debiting an expense prepaid account and crediting the particular nominal accounts with the proportionate amounts to be carried forward. Expenses prepaid account being a debit balance will appear as an asset in the balance sheet and will be carried forward in the next year's books. At the commencement of the next period, the expenses prepaid account will be closed by means of a reversal journal entry debiting the various nominal accounts and crediting the expenses prepaid account. Advertisements are sometimes paid for two or three years in advance under a contract and in such a case it should be seen that while preparing the profit and loss account of the any given period, only the proportionate amount representing that period is brought into account and the unexpired balance is carried forward as above. Accrued income. It may happen that income such as interest or dividend on investments held by the firm or rent from a sub-tenant or commission may have accrued due but may not have been received at the time of balancing. Such items of accrued income belonging to the period must be brought into account by debiting outstanding debtors account and crediting the particular nominal accounts. 
outstanding debtor's account will appear as an asset in the balance sheet and will be carried forward in the next year's books. At the commencement of the next period, a reversal journal entry will be passed debiting the particular nominal accounts and crediting the outstanding debtor's account, thus closing the later account. Income received in advance. Just as prepaid expenses are apportioned, it is also necessary to apportion any income received in advance and only bring into profit and loss account the proportion of such income as being as belong to the current year, the balance being carried forward. The, un, the usual items that come under this head are premium received from an apprentice, advertisements or subscription receipts by a newspaper, fire premium received by an insurance company, etc. The adjustment is made by means of a journal entry debiting the particular nominal account, nominal account with the portion of income to be carried forward and crediting the an account styled as prepaid income account. The latter account is shown on the liability side of the balance sheet. Provision for discounts on debtors and creditors balances. The debtors balances as taken out at the date of closing may be subject to cash discounts to be allowed by the firm. If so, this loss must be provided for by debiting discount account and crediting reserve for a discount on debtors with the estimated amount of such loss. The reserve for a discount on debtors will be shown by way of deduction from sundry debtors in the balance sheet. Similarly, the creditor's balances may be subject to cash discounts to be received by the firm. In such a case, the likely gain of such discounts may be brought into account by debiting reserve for a discount on creditors and crediting discount on discount account. Reserve for discount on creditors will appear as a deduction from Sunday creditors in the balance sheet. The reserve for discount on debtors and the reserve for discount on creditors are carried forward in the next year's books and then closed by transfer to discount account. Interest on capital. Interest at a normal rate percent is sometimes calculated on the trader's capital and charge it to the business for the purpose of ascertaining what extra profits are derived from the undertaking over and above the usual rate of interest with the capital employed therein could have earned if invested in gilded securities. The entry for adjusting interest on capital is to debit the interest account and credit the capital account with the amount of interest as calculated on the capital. Similarly, interest on drawings. As the business is charged on the one hand with interest on the capital employed therein, it should also be given the benefit of interest on the sums withdrawn by the pro proprietor on his personal account. This is done by calculating the same rate of interest on the various sums withdrawn from the dates of their withdrawal to the date of balancing and with the total amount of interest thus arrived at the capital account is debited and the interest account is credited. In the next lecture, we will discuss about reserve for a doubtful debts account, adjusting the closing entries, important points to be noted while working with the problems, and we will solve some illustrations on the above.